everybody and welcome back once again to Let's Play Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. So, <clears throat> I've woken up about half an hour ago so I may not have my wits about me this morning but I'll try my best. Um, last time we left off we were in the beggar quarter, the, the refugee sector, and we inadvertently helped them out by killing a group of uh, mercenaries and uh, the exchange leader. So, we did some good for a change. And uh, as we were leaving, we got a sort of premonition that something was quite, something was amiss on the Ebon Hawk. So we're now heading back there to find out exactly what's going on. Now, uh, before we do, I'm going to speak with Atten. I've been advised to speak with Atten regarding perhaps the conversation we had with the two Tweedleks in the uh, in the quarters down there. So uh, we'll do that as a matter of course to see if he has anything to say about it. Something up? Uh, but apparently we, we, you know, this is... Alright, what did you want to know? Ah, lovely. So yes, explaining that we uh, met someone on Nash down that says he knows you. Yeah, that's a surprise. Did he say I owed him credits too? Uh, no. No. He says you're not Atten at all, that you showed up at Nashadar during the Jedi Civil War. I'm as Atten as Atten will ever be. And whoever your trusted informant is, he's right. I did show up on Nashadar during the Jedi Civil War, along with a lot of other refugees. Carl, oh, touchy, touchy. No need to snap at me, Atten. I'm only inquiring here. Is there anything you want to tell me? You know, I'm, uh, open to... I almost could consider him as a counselor. No, because you're asking about it. If I wanted to tell you anything, I would have come and told you. Anything else? For God's sake, man, what the hell is wrong? Uh, I'm supposed to be the one woken up this morning. Uh, you got the wrong side of bed or something? Uh, ooh, perhaps some pain. I don't think she'd do that. Yes. See, if people, if anybody else talks to her this fashion, she'd be snapping back. But Atten, well, a bit of a soft touch, I'm afraid she's become when it comes to him. Okay, fine. Tell me in, in your own time. I didn't mean any harm. I was just merely inquiring. Is this an interrogation? If so, you're terrible at it. Especially for an ex-Jedi. Or whatever you are. Why don't you just crawl in my head and try to dig out whatever you're looking for rather than asking about it? Look. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, let's get to the let's get to the point. If you've got a problem, let's just sell it right now. Come on, I'm not here to mess about. You know what? I helped you get off, Fragus. If I hadn't been there, you wouldn't have even gotten off the administration level. I'm trying to help you. I don't know why I'm bothering. <laughs> well, maybe you want to protect me. I've come across a couple of occasions where you've uh, snapped at people. I don't know. I'm not sure I understand it half the time. Look, I'll ask you again. I want to know where you were before you arrived in Nashida. You know what? Not once have I asked you about the Mandalorian Wars. Not once. I heard about Duxon. Everyone has. I heard about Serico, and I sure as hell know about Malachor V. What makes you think you've got the right to interrogate me on anything? You've got plenty of lives to answer for. All you Jedi do. Ooh, done your homework, have you? <laughs> what makes you think you've got the right to interrogate me on anything? My power gives me the right. <laughs> Fine. If you've got a question, then ask it. Unlike some people, I'm not touchy-feely about my past, and I shall explain everything in great detail if you require it. How did you even live with yourself after Malachor? Is that why you went back to the Jedi Council? Hoping they'd kill you? Uh, come on. Carry on. Get it all off your chest. But Jedi don't kill, do they? At least not their prisoners. Maybe you were counting on it when you went back in chains. So you got off easy. You were exiled, brushed under the cargo ramp. Another dirty little Jedi secret. I'll tell you, all those Jedi at Malachor, they deserved it. Every last one of them. 
Ooh, that's, that's it. Keep on coming. Yeah, get it all off your chest. <laughs> yeah. I don't think she's got any sort of uh, affinity to those Jedi that died. It's not really, he hasn't really offended her at all, to be honest. Uh, come on. Explain why you believe in, as you do. Because Jedi lie, and they manipulate, and every act of charity or kindness they do, you can drag it out squirming into the light and see it for what it is. The galaxy doesn't need Jedi arrogance or Jedi hypocrisy anymore. Really? Oh. Well, to be honest with you, Atten, you have a point. And that is why I'm no longer a Jedi. The Jedi, the Sith, you don't get it, do you? To the galaxy, they're the same thing. Just men and women with too much power, squabbling over religion while the rest of us burn. At least the Sith are honest about what they're killing for. The Jedi are pacifists, except in times of war. They're teachers, except when it comes to telling their students the truth. And when they save you, it's only so you can suffer more. Well, good grief. Sounds like he has had some personal experience of all this. <clears throat> okay, I don't like any of these options here. Ugh, God, I hate it when this happens. You get a list of choices that you don't like. You're gonna pick the least of the bad bunch. If you wish to die, keep talking. Not particularly. I suppose then, fine, we've heard enough. You've got enough of your chest now, buddy. I think it's time we pushed on to the Edmund Hawk. But I'm, I'm interested to, as to what you've got to say. I'll speak to you later about this. Whatever. Just leave me alone. I don't know why I'm wasting my time with you anyway. Oh, now she switches it back on him. I don't think he's going to answer, though. <laughs> Ask him once again about his past. Well, don't get too attached to me. I don't like... Oh, he's mellowed down a bit. Holy cow. Maybe getting, maybe allowing him to get him, get all that off his chest has, has just, you know, calmed him down a little bit. <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't get too attached to me. I don't like it. <laughs> Are you all right there? Softening, softening up a little bit. That depends on your perspective. I have this habit. I'm a deserter. It's what I do. Deserter? Yeah, asking if he served in the war. Served in both of them. Against the Mandalorians, before and after Revan, and again, when Revan declared war on the Jedi. Yeah, on which side? Hmm, okay, why? Because I followed orders, but it was more than that. You were there. You knew how easy it was to hate the Jedi who sat back in the Republic, evaluating the threat, and watched us die against the Mandalorians? You served with the Republic? I did, up until the Republic officers began to betray their oaths to the Republic and side with Revan, Admiral Carith, Mon Halan, General Darid, and all the rest. Right after that final battle at Malachor, I was right there with the rest of the defectors. Because it was the right thing to do. Yes. Yes. That's more like it. The Republic were weak. You're right to turn from them. And those bloody Jedi. The Mandalorians were slaughtering us by the millions. The millions. You were at Serico when they turned the Starib cities into glass craters. At Duro when basilisk war droids rained like meteors onto the orbiting cities, and when the Mandalorians set fire to the Zoxan plains on Ares III, the fires that still burn. Without the Jedi who turned on the Council, without you, the Republic would have lost the war, and we would all be Mandalorian slaves or corpses. Yes, they deserve their betrayal, and you knew where your true loyalties lay. Admirable. We were loyal to Revan. That was enough. He saved us. Yes. So you followed Revan. Like I had. After Malachor, after the Mandalorian Wars, that's when the Sith teachings started spreading through the ranks. We knew where our loyalties lay. To the Jedi who came to help us. Not the ones who sat back on Dantooine and Coruscant, watching us die. 
So when those same Jedi who watched us die decided to start fighting us during the Jedi Civil War, we fought back. I fought back. You fought Jedi? I didn't fight Jedi. I killed them. Oh. A lot of them. People say killing Jedi is hard. It's not. You just have to be smart about it. No blasters, no getting close to them, no attacking them directly when you can gun down their allies instead. There's ways of gassing them, drugging them, making them lose control, torturing them. I was really good at it. What's worse is that killing them wasn't the best thing. Making them fall. Making them see our side of it. That was the best. Oh, 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 I think she's liking the way he's talking here. We're seeing a new light to happen all of a sudden. <laughs> you make it sound easy. I taught myself techniques. It's hard for Jedi to sense what you're really thinking if you throw up walls of strong emotions and feelings. Lust, impatience, cowardice. Most Jedi awareness doesn't cruise beyond the surface feelings to see what's deeper. And I was good at that, throwing up walls. And my superiors knew it. Sometimes the Jedi on our side wouldn't even realize I was there. So you force emotions? To block someone reading your mind? Yeah, I had a talent for it. More like instinct. I wasn't the only one. I know you left at the Mandalorian Wars. So you don't know much about what went on behind the scenes in the Jedi Civil War. But Revan understood one thing. The real battle was going to be fought between the Jedi on both sides. That was the only battle that mattered. Hmm. Carry on. Explain what you mean. Whoever had the most, the strongest Jedi were going to win the Civil War. If Revan couldn't convert Jedi, Revan would kill them. So Revan trained elite Sith units into assassination squads, whose duty was to go out and capture enemy Jedi. I was in one of the special units trained to do this. Capture? Not kill? Yeah. Revan had plans for all Jedi. I think it was important that the Jedi see his side of things, the Sith teachings. Revan wanted to break them, and then have them join him. Hmm. So how did you break away? One day, I decided not to do it anymore, so I left. Ended up on Nar Shadda, became someone else. Hmm. Well, again, not the greatest of options, but uh, this one is the least irksome. Explain it. Obviously, she doesn't care that he killed a Jedi. She has no grudges, no ill feeling. She herself has, of course, broken away herself. I didn't think you would. After Malachor, but it was a chance. I guess I was just tired of keeping it in. And I've been with you only a short time. Enough to know that as soon as someone signs on with you, they haven't got long to live. You got history, and anyone who travels with you doesn't. And maybe I want somebody to know who I was in case a story needs to be set straight. Maybe you understand. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I think one last question. But why did you leave, exactly? I think there's been enough lies and truth for today. Oh. Let's just leave it for now. Damn it. Fine. I'll have, uh... I'll take some time, Atlantis, just to think about what you've said. But, uh, rest assured, you've opened my eyes up about a few things. Take your time. I have. Developments indeed, that and uh, his feisty attitude and at the start of the conversation, spitting insults, pent up emotion and rage, and then Shala was just standing there smirking as she saw the fire in his eyes. She liked it. And then he calmed down and sort of let the let his guard down and deflated a bit and ultimately wanted to open up, explain himself. As I said, Shala, almost like a counselor, just standing there, taking it all in. And ultimately, we've gained quite a bit of information about Atten. Almost taking a very similar path to Shala in certain respects. But anyway, onwards we go back.
to our ship for further developments. Oh, just like that, are they? Well, I have laid down my arms and fall at your feet. Do you think that's going to happen, you imbecile? Right, force forms. I've been to realize that I've not been using my uh, force forms at all. Um, I haven't really had to. I have lightsaber forms, which I don't really need to use because I'm not particularly going to be focusing on lightsaber combat, but there is a force potency which increases the potency of my force powers, which is a very useful one to have to make my force powers much more, uh, well, as it says, potent. So I'm going to try and activate that. Gives me plus force damage, but it just slightly increases the cost of them, which doesn't matter really, because um, I have plenty of force points in my pool. And then I'm going to scream them down. Then I'm going to blast them with my lightning. Right. Now that that little melodrama is over... We need to enter the Ebon Hawk and defeat their captain. Right. Good old refugee getting an eyeful there of Shalar's power. <laughs> Probably looking on in horror. Ah, another one. Right, what can we do with this one? Kill and choke him down. Ah, watch his airway. Well, watch his airways close up. Oh, it's a slow and painful death, but it's fun to watch. Oh, wow. It's party time! <laughs>